everybody it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. This week we're going to combine some cherry burl with some pine cones to make a really awesome covered dish. For the 90,000 subscriber giveaway bowl we are actually going to use some Cherry burl. Look how pretty that is. Now this is a piece I pulled from stock. It was trimmed up a little bit, but it's got a gigantic hole in the bottom of it. <laughs> so uh, that's going to be a bit of an issue. I think all I'm going to do is take some sandpaper with on my drill and clean off the rest of this anchor seal. Then we'll cast it the way it sits. Should be fine. And then what I want to do is actually use some pine cones. And to date, I've pretty much only used pine cones in this orientation in my work. This time, what I want to do is trim off one side of it and put that up against the outside of the piece, uh, essentially where you'll see that the backbone of the pine cone. And we'll go all the way around the edge of this. And then I'm going to pour something that we haven't used in a long time, some magenta. some baby pink and I'm going to add a little bit of white ice with both of them and we will make this more or less translucent translucent ish but one thing that I want to show you is um, how I cleaned up these pine cones so what I did was I took some pine cones and put them in my toaster oven on, let me see what that is. 350 for 40 minutes. And the end result of that is this. You can see how shiny the petals are. Well, that's all the pitch that has weeped out of this. Let me get one that uh, before the stage. This is what they look like before they went into the oven. Just full of grossness. And again, once they come out of the oven, they look like this. So now you've got all this pitch on top of the petals that you need to get rid of. So how the way that I did that was like this. This is acetone. And what I did was put it in this container, submerge the pine cones in it, now this was clear when I first started cleaning. So, you know, I've cleaned up this amount. That was clear when I started. I want to get some gloves on. Now acetone's a pretty nasty chemical, so make sure you wear gloves with this. Make sure you're using this in a well-ventilated area as well. And if you can get uh, another one to jam in there to hold these down, I found this to be the most effective way. That way the two on the outside are submerged. Then I just throw the lid on and let that sit for about five minutes. I'll bring it back when that's ready. Five or ten minutes. So that's been ten minutes. And all I've been doing is take a little bit of compressed air to clean them off. What pitch? I don't see no pitch. It's all gone. Now I do see a little bit of white here. Once the resin gets on there that will disappear. That's not a concern. But they are nice and clean. Uh, it's kind of funny when you're blowing them sometimes you'll see little seeds fly out. Some here. I picked these up when they were, some of these were actually closed when I picked them up. They're semi-open. The other thing along with this is uh, if you do use, use if you do use acetone, I would say leave them overnight. So after you blow them off, let them air out overnight, and then that, any 
uh, acetone will gas off and then you won't have any issues with casting because acetone will eat resin so it's important that it will gas off but I mean it, it doesn't take long at all for that to happen. So there's our burl all cleaned up. All I did was use a wire brush like this and then just a little pick tool. Picked out any little stuff and then blew it up with compressed air and that's it. So you know this burl is not even. This is a high side. So you know ordinarily I would just probably set it in there like this. But you're going to have this high side here. So what I want to do is lay this in kind of crook it and then that way the natural edge is even across the top so the pine cones will sit in there better. Now, something like that. I'll remove this glue when it dries or hardens I should say. So yeah, that's ready for the pine cones. Now what I want to do, I've actually been looking for pine cones that are curved and then that way they'll fit nicely on the outside of the casting which I think is probably going to be the best way to do this and you know I probably could take these over and cut them off on the bandsaw I don't know it's kind of itch iffy I did try a little one here to see if it was actually going to work and there you go I mean it looks pretty good to me I might trim it up a little bit more so that we can get that spine closer to the outside because keep in mind we're going to trim some of this away so yeah actually I do need to get rid of a fair bit more of this anyway I'm just going to use some scissors to do that I think that's the easiest way uh, trying to hold on to these and clean these off and the band saws I think is a little sketchy these are kind of small if they were larger I could probably do it but these are a little small Hopefully you're enjoying the video so far. Since this is a giveaway, I feel that I need to cover this again because it happens every giveaway. If you win this bowl or this dish, I will not ever ask you for shipping. Do not get caught up by these people that are trying to scam you. If you win this bowl, I will ship it worldwide at my expense. Please do not accommodate them. And if you do happen to see it in the comment section, there are three dots to the right of the comment. Please report it as spam and YouTube will take it down. Thanks. Yeah, cleaning these up on the belt sander is the way to go for that. That's for sure. Now I debated on using hot melt glue to hold these, but I'm going to put another bowl on the inside of this. And I'm thinking that that's going to hold everything in place. I am going to orientate them all in the same direction. That is one thing that I will do. And of course it's not going to be big enough. So I've got to try and get another one here. All right, so now that we have enough pieces, let's try this again. For those who are curious, the reason why I don't want to use the hot melt glue is because you, it could run down one of the petals and then you've got hot melt glue embedded in the casting, which you certainly don't want. With that smaller bowl being put on the inside of it, they were held securely, so I wasn't worried about them moving around. There! I think we're ready to mix up some resin. Since this isn't a deep casting, I figured that I was good to use the art cast from Designer Epoxy. And of course, the benefits of using art cast is you get great color separation. And that was another thing that I was really going for in this piece. Uh, you certainly could use deep cast, but if you're going to use deep cast, I would wait at least 14 hours after mixing and then um, do your pour then. But uh, I don't really see the need for it because our cast is good up to one inch in thickness and that certainly was uh, good in this regard here. So we've got the magenta, the baby pink, and you'll see me use the white ice. Got to be a little careful with the white ice because what will happen is if you put too much of that in, 
then it's going to turn it's going to lighten up the other pigments so you know it's always best to, to maybe go a little easy on that and keep adding it until you've got kind of the color that you're looking for i really like using this because it gives you kind of a more pearl effect so that's why i like to use it all right i'm just going to put these in my clean room with some heat and then once we hit about 45 degrees we'll do the pour Okay, we're at 45 degrees, so I'm just going to burn some bubbles off and then we'll do the pour. Fifty-seven, just climbing fast. I've got this set up, you'll be able to see there. Sorry, that's all I can do for you really. That's about all she can take. Uh, what I will do is throw this in the pressure pot, uh, level it best I can, and then top it up, and then we'll see you guys tomorrow. What's the best way to carry this? Sure. It is the next day. This has actually got some weight to it, you know that? Uh, resin level dropped off a little bit. I figured it would. I was hoping that it wouldn't drop off that much though, but it's kind of the, the beast that you're dealing with, I think. Let's get this out and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, definitely. That's going to be cool. We've got some trimming of resin to do, that's for sure. But uh, one of the reasons why I mix that baby pink so strong is because you can see it, it almost looks a little clearer there. So uh, I do recommend probably mixing the baby pink stronger than you probably would any other colors. So before I can mount this on the cold jaws, that's what I want to do. That way we can clean this off and get a foot on the very bottom or get a glue block on the bottom. I need to grind this edge back because it's kind of wonky so I'll take this over to my belt sander grind this edge away and then I'll be able to mount it on the cold jaws Since there's a decent taper on this bowl, it's being held securely by the cold jaws. Last week's project, which had a more straight wall up near the top, was a little more sketchy to hold, but as long as you've got a decent taper like there is on this bowl, it's going to hold be held by the, the cold jaws quite securely. But you should always use tailstock support whenever you can. That way you just uh, don't seem to have as many mishaps, because you can still have them, that's for sure. Also, I'd like to thank everybody that watched last week's video. Uh, super popular video. Thanks so much for that. The, uh, the coral bowl. Uh, I was really, really not sure <laughs> when I was making that, that, um, that bowl for, for Jim D. Yeah, but anyway, it, it's a special piece and it is way up there. And I mean, certainly in my top three maybe even number one as far as uh, things that I've made before. So, you know, I will link that at the end of this video if you haven't seen it, but it's a really cool concept and um, it's been well received by others. Along with that, I would also like to thank those who have given me super thanks, super stickers and super chats. I really do appreciate it 100%. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. So we're just using the Hercules here to prep the base of this bowl. Then I sanded it with 60 grit to give the hot melt glue a good tooth. There it is right there on a waste block. Still getting questions a fair bit on as to why I turn outboard. And if you're new here, I'm left-handed and 
Uh, I like to, this is a 20 inch general variable speed general and it has left end threads on the outboard end. So I just made up some adapters. Well, I made an adapter to fit my lathe to fit these smaller little face plates, these homemade face plates. And I will actually do a video on these, not so much the welding, but at least the, the prepping of it, because that's another very common question that I get. But anyway, if you're left-handed, uh, I understand your, your problems with working over the lathe bed. So look for a general uh, lathe. Unfortunately, they're out of business, but there are a ton of these lathes on the market. So if you can get your hands on one of those, you'll probably find it a lot more comfortable to turn outboard than over the lathe bed. I can, but I find moving it outboard so much more easier to turn, uh, more natural. So that's the reason why I turn outboard, if you're curious. So you may have noticed that up near the very top where the pine cones are, that there's some issues there. Ideally, the outside plastic bowl that this was sitting in should have been maybe another inch deeper. But of course, it's hard to find the perfect size bowl when you, when you need it for casting. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to repair this. And But ideally, if that bowl had been deeper and I would have been able to pour more resin in there, the whole pine cone would have been encased in it and uh, I wouldn't have to really do anything else. So anyway, the goal right now is just to trim this up, get rid of any excess resin, and then we can make a, a call on to basically what we're going to do after that. So the great thing about the Hercules is that it can be used in many configurations. There I was just using it flat. There I'm cutting well above center. Uh, the great thing about this tool is the, the fact that it's got a bevel underneath the cutter. So you can treat this uh, scraper essentially like a gouge. And most of the time when I'm using this, you'll see that I've got it at a 45 degree angle. And you'll see that I'm cutting above center, like well above center as well. But as long as it's at a 45 degree angle, then it's not going to catch or your catches are going to be very limited if there is any. So if you're looking to purchase the Hercules or any, any of the other Hunter Tool Systems tools, and he, Mike Hunter certainly does have a quite an extensive line of tools on his website. So uh, check him out. And there is a link in the description to get 10% off your order. And uh, Mike is really awesome to deal with. And here in Canada, it's Ken Rude out in Calgary, if you're a Canadian, and we'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to contact him. And again, all the details are in the description below the video. Check them out. They're great tools. You won't be disappointed. Well, what do you think so far? Pretty cool. I really dig this. Uh, I'm liking this magenta and baby pink better than I thought I would. I have found that, you know, it, it, the, the baby pink seems to have been washed out again. So, you know, I probably need to mix it probably twice as strong as what I did in order to get that color that I'm looking for. But there's an issue right here. And it's basically the spine of the, of the pine cone is right at the very corner here. And I don't want to lose that. That's important for me to keep that there. 
So I'm going to need to fill this in. So we're going to have to use some UV resin to do so. Um, also along with that, you know, I'm just, I'm just not real happy with this being uh, a 90,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. Like I, I think that it needs maybe a lid, a lid with some magenta and baby pink and pine cones, maybe some cherry burl. So I'll see what I got and um, we'll pour a lid for this piece just to give it a little more, you know, pizzazz. Uh, so anyway, let's do the UV resin first and then I'll probably tackle the lid tomorrow, but let's do the UV resin first. This is what we're going to be using. This is the UV epoxy or UV resin from Designer Epoxy. And we don't need a ton of this, but need enough that you have some volume to mix up. I think what I'm going to do is uh, just use the baby pink. Why do I only have one glove on? And I'm going to use the baby pink. I think that that's probably a better choice. If you use the magenta, it may be kind of really bright. So we'll just use the baby pink. And we'll get a tiny little bit of resin so we can't give it too, too much. So what I'm going to do is there's a couple spots here on the side that I'm going to fill first. And then once we get it on there, we'll use the UV light to cure it uh, for two minutes. And then I'll move my way around the bowl until I get it all filled in. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll work my way around this and I'll bring you back when I'm done. All right, so all the areas have been filled in now. Uh, a little bit on both sides. There's a hole there. But I think that once we trim this, I think there's enough material on there that we should be able to trim it back and it'll be ready to go. But that'll be tomorrow. See you then. In order to make the lid, what I'm going to use is this bucket here. It's just a little bit smaller. Oh, now it's probably about the same size, just about, as this piece. Uh, most of the buckets I have are too small or too large. So this will give us some room for air when we're actually on the lathe turning it. Uh, these are the three pine cones I'm going to use. And I'm going to actually use them in the same orientation. I'm going to lay them down like this as opposed to having them standing straight up, although that would look really cool because we've seen that in the past. But um, I'm just going to trim these up a little bit and then run them on the drum sander and clean them off and then we'll get the casting. So again, I just took those over to the belt sander, ground it off a little bit. Uh, I didn't think there's any need to show that. Uh, you know, I think these are probably going to float. So I'm going to have to glue these down somehow. I don't think that I want to use hot melt glue though. And note how I've got the curves like this. I think I'll just use the Star Bond Thick to do this. Spray some accelerator down in there. That way when they contact it, it should set. There, I'll just let that sit for a little bit and let it uh, gas off. I'll probably blow some compressed in there, air in there to try and get rid of all that accelerator because I don't know how that will work with the resin. Anyway, I'll be back after I get some resin mixed up. Okay, one of these is at 57, so we got to get moving here. Do the same thing, pour from each side. Okay, I'll get this into the push pot. We'll see you tomorrow. While we're waiting for the lid to cure up, we might as well trim this up, sand it, and uh, get it to its first coat of finish. 
maybe actually we'll put a coat of finish on it. See what it looks like. For those who are curious, this is the Phoenix. Uh, the one thing that I really like about this tool is that it's got a rounded shaft so you can rotate it to whatever degree. If you've, if you've turned for a while, you know that there's that sweet spot. So because this tool has a rounded shaft, you can rotate it till you find that sweet spot and then it'll cut great and you'll have very little chip out and tear out when using this tool. Light cuts, of course, are the key. Still got some areas to fill in here with the UV resin. Once I get that done, I'll be right back. So after the second filling, of course, we've got to trim this up again. On those flat areas, like on the very top of that bowl, you see me using the Hercules. I do prefer to use the Hercules on those flat areas. I don't know why, I just do. Uh, you know, it's funny, I get emails each week. And you know, I, I'm not a veteran resin caster. I've really only been probably resin casting for about two and a half years now. I've got some experience under my belt and I'd like to think that I know what I'm doing now. But you know, there's, there's still... A lot of times where I, I feel I'm a rookie, <laughs> but you know, I, I get emails and you see it in the comments each week from veteran resin casters that have switched to designer epoxy and absolutely love it. So just like Hunter Tools, Sandpaper.ca and Starbond Adhesives, there is a link in the description. Check them out. They make a fantastic product. So, you know, I think I'm just going to take this down, get rid of the spine. That way, at least it's all uniform across the top. I probably wouldn't be so noticeable from the side. I was really thinking that, you know, it was important to leave this in here, but the more I look at it, the more I hate it. So, off it comes. Speaking of great products, these are the three and a half inch dipple discs from sandpaper.ca. And just like all of my resin pieces, this piece was sanded from 60 to 800 before we did any buffing. Here I'm using a parting tool to cut in the area where the lid is going to be sitting. Uh, when, you're, when you do this, make sure that you use a freshly sharpened parting tool. That way it cuts cleanly and you don't get any chip out or tear out when you're using it. And of course, like I do each week, this is the Triple E buffing compound from the Be All Buffing System. That will just remove any fine little scratches that remain before the first coat of finish goes on. After, of course, cleaning up with some denatured alcohol. This is Waterlux Gloss.
Well, cherry barrel and pine cones don't seem to disappoint now, do they? Really nice color separation. Pearl is spectacular. Loving these spines that you see from the pine cone. Inside is really busy too. Beautiful piece. All right, we'll see you tomorrow when we're doing the lid. So it is the next day. Uh, <laughs> this looks like it's sunk down into the casting here, so I don't think that it's going to be a problem. But I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Go deep down in there. I don't know if you can pick that up or not. When they're pretty deep. And yeah, three quarters of an inch or so. Hmm. <clears throat> That side looks all right. Um, yeah, I think we're going to be all right. Maybe we'll give it a little bit of a dome shape. Not sure. The bottom of the bucket was actually a little convex, so I figured, you know, if I'm going to, I want to put a glue block on this, so it was best to flatten it and to give the resin a bonding surface for the hot melt glue to attach to. We'll get the sun lathe in about 10 minutes. So if you're getting the sense that this thing was fighting me um, the whole way, you're you're probably right. <laughs> it, it was. And I didn't there was there's actually a thermal crack in this too that I did not see at all. There was on the very bottom of the container that holds the rock was a little bit of blue resin and that ended up being embedded into the bottom of the lid too. You don't really see it, but there was a thermal crack and you know, I was just like, I never even seen it until after the first coat of finish went on. There you can see the blue. So, you know, this thing, you know, you, you, you get pieces like this that, that fight you and fight you and, you know, sometimes <laughs> you wonder if, if, if it even wants to be made. But uh, eventually, you know, I think this is a really nice piece and it, it does work out in the end. But, you know, it's, it's something you got to sometimes fight through and, and hopefully it works out for you. So as we see the Phoenix doing its magic, uh, I did cut a lot of footage out of the, basically the turning of the bottom of this. Uh, it is very repetitive and this video was getting very long. But um, anyway, we'll soon have to do another pour. If you were observant when you looked at the thumbnail, you noticed that there is a knob on the top. So we'll have to do that. So those things certainly have not gone as I had planned them on being. Uh, what I basically wanted to do was set this right down inside of the bowl, bowl here, down inside of this lip area and then come out and have a little knob on it. But of course with that um, weight sinking in there, that's kind of put a wrench into the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do is I think that I'll just flatten this off on this side in here. I'll leave kind of this detail here. Cut this in. We'll put this on the bowl. Hopefully we get a good snug fit. And then turn this. I'm going to leave this actually fairly thick. So that will add 
to the height of this piece overall. Kind of like that affair. And then we'll have to do another pour uh, for a knob. Such is life, people. Such is life. I basically wanted to finish the underside of the lid. That way we didn't have to worry about it later on. So this piece was sanded from 60 to 800 like the base. And then, like I usually do, I use the triple E buffing compound to buff underneath. And then that way we can get it ready for finish when the time comes. Even after buffing, I still didn't notice that there was a thermal crack in there. <laughs> I, was, I was actually kind of surprised uh, the next day when I looked at it. I was like, oh, there's a thermal crack there. Never even seen it. So, you know, it doesn't take away from the piece and it doesn't go all the way through to the very top surface of the lid. So uh, I didn't really do anything with it because I didn't really see the need to do anything with it. So here I'm using the parting tool to fit the lid to the base. If you've got a really sharp parting tool, you you know, a lot of times you don't have to do any sanding at all. You could probably just hit it with the, uh, the triple E buffing compound and then that'll be it. I do hit it with a, I think maybe just some 800 to just take a little edge off, especially I didn't want to leave any sharp corners where it goes into the bowl so you know once once i do get the right fit here i think i just hit it with the 800 and that's it Just pointing out here that I actually parted this piece and I was getting ready to break it off and I looked up and of course the camera was not. So I thought I would point that out. And just hammering on the base and I got a good tight fit, really happy with that. So I've got a really good friction fit here and I'm pretty confident that this isn't gonna go anywhere. But I am taking very light cuts almost to the size of the base i left it a little larger than the base because when you sand it back then it'll pretty much match up with the base and you'll see that i do actually sand the base a little bit later on so you know the goal is just to clean off all of this old waste block and glue and get it ready for yet again another casting There were actually some small little voids. You might be able to see them on the top. I wasn't overly concerned about those because I knew that when I did the pour for the knob that it would fill those areas in. And just hitting it with some 60 grit to give the, uh, the next resin pour a good tooth to bond to. Before I removed it from the lathe, I actually just drew a couple circles on there, three to be exact. 
This is my solution. Dixie cup, pine cone. Glue that down on there and then we'll do a pour. By putting the Dixie cup upside down, that prevented the pine cone from lifting out and causing yet another issue. There, I'll let that glue harden up. I mean, it's so important that this doesn't leak because the resin could wick down the side and then weld the top to the base. And we certainly do not, do not want that. All right, I'm gonna mix up some resin and then I'll bring it back when we're doing the pour. Okay, we're pretty hot here, we gotta get going. There we go. Put this in the first pot. And I guess we'll see you tomorrow. Again. So it is in fact the next day and I'm sanding here from 60 to 800 again and just grinding it back to I just touched the surface of the bowl. And once that's done, buffed it out with the triple E buffing compound, of course the denatured alcohol. I did notice that the lid moved a little bit during the evening, so I had to take that apart, clean it up. Still had a pretty good decent friction fit, and then I used the electrical tape just to hold it in place. After that I was pretty confident that it wasn't going to go anywhere. Still took some pretty light cuts on the, um, the knob section though. In order to get rid of basically the glue that was at the base, I used the bowl gouge and I was too aggressive with it. There you see all kinds of resin blowout. So now I've got to trim that back. I was hoping to have more of a dome shape. In the end, it's still a beautiful piece and I'm happy with it. But you know, it's, it was just one of these turnings that just fought me every step of the way. Um, so anyway, it's just, it's an error on my part. And I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a dome, but in the end, I still think that it's, you know, a beautiful piece. So we're going to see a lot of the Phoenix working on the top here, still working on that resin chip out from the gouge. And because of the small cutter on the Phoenix, it's, it's good to work in these tight little areas up underneath of that knob to give it some definition. Still have some resin chip out to, to repair. I didn't measure the wall thickness on the top of the lid. I probably should have done that before I put it on just to know how safe I was. There I'm tapping on it, listening to see how thin it is. In the end, it's not an issue at all. But you know, it's just one of those things where I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm going to end up going through the top and then I'm going to have to pour um, a different lid for it. <laughs> maybe, maybe this time I get it right. Uh, anyway, it, it, I end up getting it. I just really wish there was a little bit more of a dome on the lid.
I did need to do a little bit of filling on the top with the CA glue. So I sand it to 180. There you can see the filling. And then of course, ground it all back. And then once it was ground back, I sanded it out to 800. When you want it to come off, it won't come off. When you want it to stay on, it won't stay on. There we go. Let's see, it's pretty close to a match, color-wise. All right, let's figure out what we're going to do here for finishes and how we're going to do it. I didn't want this piece to be a friction fit piece so all I'm doing is just relieving the area where the lid's going to sit. That way, you know, you don't have to fight to get the lid off when you want to open it up. So while I've got the bowl mounted on the lathe, I figured that I might as well do the second coat. So again, buffing out with the triple E buffing compound and cleaning with the denitrated alcohol before the second coat finish goes on this. Beautiful little bowl, lid dish, I guess. All right, back again with the Waterlux gloss. Well, I think that that would probably do it for that. Covered quite nicely. That's a really cool part right there. We're totally digging that. Tiny little burl eyes in this cherry burl too. Really nice. All right, let's tackle the lid here. There's the underside. Unfortunately, it's going to take two coats as well. Uh, I can see how the pine petals look to be drier than the rest of the piece. But we'll have to see. Anyway, I will do the same thing tomorrow. I'll just do a coat on the very top of this. And then uh, we'll look at it and see if it needs another coat after that. There's the lid. It's pretty cool too. So what I'll probably do is put another two coats, one on the top and one on the bottom on this piece. And then I think that'll be it for the lid. After two coats, I'm happy with the finish. So I decided to free it from the waste block. Once that was done, just use the vacuum chuck to clean up the bottom here. And uh, I think we'll sand it to 500 on the bottom. I do find that if you're going to write on the bottom of these bowls, especially if there's any resin involved, it's probably best to keep it around 500 and then just no buffing. The buffing will make it too smooth and then it's very hard to put your signature on. All right, let's pick a winner of this beautiful lit dish and a winner for the three gallons of epoxy. Good luck, everyone. Since the last bowl giveaway by myself, there have been 10 videos. These are the names that the random YouTube comment picker has selected for each one of those videos. So what we're going to do is throw these into the lidded dish, shake them up, 
and we'll pick a winner. Good luck, everybody. Well, these 10 anyway. These are the names that have been selected by the YouTube Random Combat Picker for the epoxy giveaway. This is how many videos there's been since the uh, last giveaway at 80,000, 17 videos in total. It has selected Randall Wilkie twice, so he's got the best chance to win, but we will see. Let's draw a name. All right, let's do the giveaway for the bowl. So here are all the names going into the bowl. Throw the lid on it. The winner of the 90,000 subscriber giveaway project is... Mary Ellen Gillen. You are the winner of the 90,000 subscriber giveaway project. Congratulations, send your details to spragwoodturning at gmail.com. And once I have verified that it is you, then I will get your project mailed out to you or get your, get your uh, lidded dish mailed out to you. Mary Ellen Gillen, congratulations. All right, let's do the epoxy. Here's all the names for the epoxy draw. And drop these in here. So the winner of the three gallon kit of designer epoxy is Mary Paulson, you are the winner of the three gallon kit from Designer Epoxy. Same thing for you. Send your details to spragwoodturney at gmail.com and Designer Epoxy will get your three gallon kit of epoxy mailed out to you. Congratulations. All right, let's actually talk about this week's project. Well, all right, let's have a last little chat about this little beauty. Uh, glad that I made a lid for this. I think that it, it really needed it. Uh, I'm really, really happy with the way that it turned out, and I hope you guys are as well. It is seven and a half inches across and three, or sorry, four and a half inches tall from the very top of the, the knob to the base of the bowl. And uh, it is really cool. I'll show these individually. So the burl eyes in this are just crazy very small very tight and again i'm sorry it's so shiny i know it's hard to probably see i'll put rotating photos up the end like i or video like i usually do here is the very bottom it will still need one more coat of finish and then it will be ready to go to its new home something about pine cones i, I don't know they almost look like the fossils if you if you can if you're following uh the baby pink and the magenta i think are a good match together so if you haven't tried them certainly uh give them a go you probably will like it or should say look so <laughs> the lid again I, I just the way i was looking at it i never seen that thermal crack and here it is here i don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick it up or not it doesn't go all the way through to the top it's only down below uh with that weight sh sinking down into here that certainly caused an issue <laughs> that's for sure and uh but you know i'm happy with the lid i really like the way uh, again it's almost like fossils yeah, so shiny all right so as far as i know designer epoxy is still going to do another three gallon kit at a hundred thousand hundred thousand that's just crazy i can't believe we're even talking about that but uh, i haven't heard otherwise so i'm assuming that they are so please leave designer epoxy in the comments down below and please watch your spelling there's a lot of people that aren't even spelling it correctly and if it isn't spelled correctly then the youtube comment picker isn't going to pick it up and of course every five thousand i'm going to give away something else so please leave a comment down below to be entered into that draw 
Next week, we are going to be doing a double crotch, double cherry crotch hall of form. And it looks pretty cool. Hopefully, uh, you guys like that. So that'll be next week. Um, congratulations again to Mary Ellen Gillen and Mary Paulson. I, I believe that they comment a lot on my videos. So, you know, that that's probably one of the reasons. <laughs> and I, I know that there's a lot of people that comment every week. And for whatever reason, that, that it's just, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't like your name. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Dave Curta, I know that he, he comments almost every, he does comment every week, and I don't think his name's ever been pulled. So, uh, anyway, I don't know. I don't know what to say. But uh, anyway, please keep commenting, and uh, maybe one of these days your name will get pulled for one of these, uh, one of these giveaways. All right, well, that's it. Take care. Stay safe. Don't forget about the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. And, of course, that thumbs up will always help. We'll see you next week for the Hall of Forum.